Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match between Nail and Honu. Nail is currently in the top left corner, he is playing Reckon, while Honu is in the bottom right corner. Oops, went too far. Honu is in the bottom right corner, and he has not chosen his race from where we can see. He is playing Vekir, actually, so Honu is playing Vekir while Nail is playing Grekum. So Honu very quickly going for a 6RP on LC build, while Nail is going for. He's getting his RP set up. He's moving his Arcticus towards the center here. By the way, this is on Cordova. This is a rather large map. Fairly newer map, but one that's probably one of the be most played of the three most recent maps that are in a different paradigm that I described before, the more Command and Conquer style paradigm. And this is... Anyway, this is a rather large map as well, like I said before. It's 400 by 400, which is probably the largest... Well, yeah, the largest 1v1 map that's currently in existence for Akron. Most 1v1 maps would cap out at 2v6 by 2v6, but recently I decided, you know what, it could work with a larger map size, so many of the newer ones are 320x320 or 400 by 400 Though Cordova was adapted from a four-player map, which partly accounts for the large size. Anyway, back to the game. So Nail is double-checking, make sure, making sure he gets perfect economy, trying to get these RPs close to the boxes so they don't fly up, while Honu is he has his RP set up, he has 9 LCRPs and 4 QPRPs, so at the 211 mark. So he's definitely going heavily for economy while he has a Shinbeer followed by, or Tethyr following a, sorry. Following means something is behind, which means the Shinbeer is following the Tethyr. Okay, good. I've completely lost my command of the English language, apparently. Well, in the meantime, while I try to remember English, we'll focus on the fact that Honu is definitely going for he very heavily to economy, while Nail has not actually gotten that far along the timeline yet. Nail is... Well, both players are actually in slow-mo right now, as you can see right here. But Honu has fast-forward already beforehand, which means that Honu is definitely ahead, getting initiative. Nail does have his economy setting up, and both players should be set up relatively at the same time. But it looks like Nail got a bit messed up with his octa positioning, so he's going to have to reposition this stuff. And... Once he has that set up, his economy will have started. Though, like I said before, he is two minutes behind Honu right now, which means he is going to have a less representative display of what he's actually up to. I can't really tell what he's going for. He's going for standard economy from here, but of course, whether he's going for full saturation or simply partial saturation followed by a rush, which is highly unlikely in this map, so probably full saturation. But anyway, whatever he's going for is not clear at the moment. While Honu is, of course, going for full saturation, especially on QP, which is important. Vecchio is very QP hungry. Bit surprised he hasn't built more foundations though. Building, he's not built a depot. He has not built anything other than just these RPs. Of course, he's sending. Well, he has a Shinbeer Tethyr. Actually, no, he's a Tethyr building a com hub in the center of the, well, center of a cross street here, right next to Nail's natural expansion. A great spot to put it, really, because this is the expansion Nail is most likely to go towards. Well, or this, but this is the closest one to Nail. This is more the one that Honu is likely to go for. But honestly. These are about the same distance from each, from the bases, so it's not a huge difference. And Gate Tech being upgraded extremely quickly for Honu, so Honu is going for a very fast Chrono Rush, which, of course, given the high QP, makes sense. Though, as I mentioned before, Grekum, yeah, sorry, Vekir is very QP heavy, Grekum not so much. Grekum needs QP, but Vekir needs QP for every single advanced vehicle, while Grekum can usually get away with a fair amount of base class units, which are just LC sinks. And even then, only the Faro line units are that, and Legos, are that QP costly. So really, Grekum can get away with lower QP better than Vekir can. Regardless, Honu is going for a Gate Tech rush. That is what's happening. So Gate Tech is being constructed at the 416 mark. And then from there, he will be able to get a depot. And then I'm a bit surprised he didn't build a depot before going for Gate Tech. However, that, that's a little odd. He is getting an annex towards the Southwest expansion, though, which means he will be able to build a depot here and then get vehicles here, and then from there be able to just deal with everything. And of course, the Shin and Tethvir are hanging out here as well. A Zionvir will be coming in shortly to build more expansions, and the Com Hub is getting Smart Idle on as well. So Honu isn't just using the Com Hub for scouting, he is using it for command assistance. And Gate Tech is now done! So auto defense is also being upgraded, but really at this point, Gate Tech is what he needs. Like I said, I'm a bit surprised he didn't have the depot up sooner. He really should have had a foundation set up to have a slip gate right away, just to get it as quickly as possible. He has the money to do it, which surprises me that he hasn't. But he hasn't. So apparently a bit more practice needs to be done in the timing for that Corona Rush, but 
The idea seems sound, as long as you can avoid getting attacked and on this map, like I said before, it's not a map where rushes are likely to happen quickly, though it is a map where you could still have the Grekim sending in Firepaws right now. Like, the Firepaws could be up and running and hitting you right now. It's just that Nail didn't go for heavily on QP, he went more heavily on LC, which means he's getting a ton of base class units, you easily get those, just can't easily get anything else. And now a bunch of foundations are being built in the Southwest expansion of the 510 mark. Honu is getting a depot, he will be getting a depot, he's focused a bit further in the future, when Faro's are attacking his main base, but this is of course after Gate Tech has been researched, so not a whole lot of stoppage will be happening by the... Like I said, I, I forgot to speak English recently, apparently, so I... So I can tell from my own diction or lack thereof, I apologize. But the important thing is the Faros will not be able to stop the gate tech. They will only be able to hit some RPs, which won't really do much. The amount of resources in the bank by the time this attack hits means that it's not going to make a huge difference. However, there is a lot, not a lot of LC coming in. I mean, there's a lot of LC income, but not a lot of LC in the bank for Honor right now. Well, Nail has a ton of LC in the bank and almost no QP because, of course, he didn't actually build any QP RPs. Now, when Nail is, he is building QP RPs by the 550 mark. He has three of them set up. So he will have some QP coming in later on, but really he's still starved for QP. He has another try, however, going towards the top right expansion, so he's not going towards this expansion. He does have... Okay, he has some base class units here to scout it out, but he's not going for it. He's not aware of the comm hub, but he's... Well, he's more worried about the expansion up here, and also going for the expansion... Actually, he's going for an expansion down towards the bottom... The bottom... Or the middle right. Not really bottom, but... Basically what... Honu, I would expect it to be Honu's natural expansion is actually now Nail is taking it. So Nail is definitely trying to position himself to have map control, while Honu teleports some of his RPs away. Not a bad idea, given that they're going to be easy prey for the Faros otherwise. One of the Faros, however, is not, or sorry, one of the RPs, however, is not able to teleport away far enough. It doesn't have the order to do so. It has the energy, but not the order to do so. Honu definitely more worried about setting up his base in the bottom left corner and setting up his well, Bastion to defend, his depot, his ACC. Needs a slipgate. I'm surprised he doesn't have a slipgate. He's... He has no vehicle, so he's not really using gate tech to get... To get automatic skip teleport. Though that will happen. That is a handy little benefit. But that's not what he's primarily using it for. And Nail, also, like I said, he is taking over this expansion. He definitely has a ton of Octos setting up there. So that expansion is his. He has no worries about it. So his economy is definitely going to be in a much better position than Hone is right now. But of course, that's how Chrono Rushes work. Chrono Rushes are dependent on attacking really early on, and then Chrono putting back to attack even earlier on as a result. Right now, Honu is jumping back a bit further. He does have... Now, this is still after he gets a gate tech. I'm, once again, surprised he didn't have this stuff set up earlier. Though the fact that he is building up in a base outside of his main it makes it not as surprising. And he is also using these comm hubs quite effectively to get an idea of what's going on. So he knows exactly what's going on with Nail's expansion here, and he knows exactly what's going on outside of his new main base. Now admittedly, if Nail finds the comm hub, it can kind of follow the breadcrumb trail, although, like I said before, comm hub's a huge vision range. This comm hub can see Nail, Nail can't see the comm hub. This comm hub is completely outside of the vision range of any of Nail's units, and the comm hubs themselves have a vision range of about 40 units, which means these comm hubs are about 7 units apart. I think there's some overlap here. Anyway, Away from the technical details, the Faros are still dealing damage. Honu has not saved this RP here. He doesn't seem worried about it. He seems more worried. Although, what he should be worried about is the fact that Nail has basically taken all the bases, or is in the process of taking all the bases on the map except for the bottom left. So, if that bottom left expansion is not. Well, it's not paying off, and Honu. He's getting a lot of research. He's gotten almost every tech, but he doesn't have a lot of. QP, he doesn't have a lot of RP, he's not, sorry, he's not a lot of RP, he's not a lot of, not, some QP, tons of power, so he can build a ton of vehicles if he wants to, and Nail's a bit curious if, if Honu is actually even connected, and Konu is definitely connected, and this is a bit of a, a little bit of a tip, if you're, it looks like your opponent, and this is for true for all RTS games, if it looks like your opponent is not in the game, like, seems kind of idle, doesn't seem like they're doing much, they probably are doing a lot that you just can't see. Case in point, this expansion. So, if your opponent doesn't seem to be doing much in their main base, that's the time to be paranoid. That they're doing a proxy build, or that they're doing some cheese like this. Well, it's not even cheese anymore. It's well past the point of being cheese. It's just getting every single tech in the game before actually building anything.
Getting a Shin Churcher, so finally getting a unit other than a Veer class, and actually finally building a unit, to be honest. He hasn't built any units beyond his starting three. So, Nail... Nail, I still think, is in a better spot. He's got... He has production capacity, he has the resources he needs to produce, he has map control, he has resources across the entire map, he has... <laughs> okay, Nail is starting to get... Like, Nail isn't getting paranoid enough. I know it sounds weird given his chat, but he's not getting paranoid enough. <laughs> yeah. Honu's response possibly throwing him off, but yeah, Nail really needs to be a bit more paranoid. If he's able to attack the main base with impunity, that doesn't mean the opponent isn't there. Well, it means the opponent isn't focused on the area, but... <laughs> okay, admittedly, okay, I will be honest, Honu's strategy is a little bit odd, because he isn't producing a whole lot, and he isn't getting a lot of resources. And obviously he can, but the thing is, he has gate tech, he can do... He could have done a Chrono Rush, he got a bunch of tech instead, I'm not sure what he's really planning on doing with it. Getting a Shin Haokin and a Shin Turcher as well. So he's going to have two Shin Turchers, Ted Turcher, and a Shin Haokin. Not a terribly bad idea, but once again, I'm really curious as to why he decided to go about it this way. It's almost nine minutes into the game, and right now, Nail has a huge advantage. Really, all Nail needs to can do is convert this economy into production. Legal class would help, but even without that, he could just convert this economy into production, just jump towards the present, building and building and building and building as he goes along, and he'll have a massive army by the time Honu actually does anything, even with chrono porting, which Honu hasn't bothered to build yet, he has no slipgate or anything. Even with chrono porting, the death ball will just be too big, and it looks like Honu is getting up, he's going to be getting up to Zion Pulsers as well, so that will help, but the Zion Pulsers, even then, like I said, Honu's going to need a lot more units. He is over teleporting some a Shin Turcher and Ted Turcher towards. He's going for a UPP delayed attack towards Nail, towards his weakest expansion, and this will help a bit, damage some. Bit. He will damage it a bit, but it's not going to be that much. The Octos, of course, are not going to last too long, but like I said, this is Nail's weakest, de weakest expansion, his least defended expansion. This is the expansion that's his real prize, and the Northeast will likely be prize. And now Nail. Realizing he really should be paranoid, but also really should be producing. Should be jumping towards the future, producing and producing and producing and producing, just building everything he can. Because he has a ton of resources, he has very little chrono energy. That's what he needs. Tons of chrono energy. Which he'll have closer towards the present. Regardless, Shin Turcher and Teth Turcher are able to get rid of the expansion, so Honu has managed to deal some damage, but he's lost quite a bit in the process, and like I said, he's fallen a, a long way behind. This is really just an attempt to get himself back into the game, because right now he has one expansion, Actually, one base, not even one expansion. His main base is being destroyed systematically. So he has one base. That base isn't super well saturated. 7 LC and 4 QP. So he's getting some resources, but not a whole lot. He has tech in every single department except for weapons. And he's not really taking advantage of it, except for the teleportation from gate tech. And even then, he hasn't got enough units to really make use of it. To really be nimble enough with it. So I don't imagine that he's actually going to be able to do much. He is literally trying to nanite this Articus, which will be of no use. Nail is not using that to command anything. The only Articus he's using to command is the one in his main base, which is what most Grecan players do. And here we go. So Nail is getting Legal Class. He is getting Sepi Legos. He's getting everything he can. Moving towards the present. Well, fast forwarding towards the present, so not quite optimally, but still moving towards the present. Building a bunch of Sepi Legos and will be able to just keep building and building and building. He has plenty of resources to do this with, plenty of energy to do this with. So, right now, Honu is in a... Like I said, he is... Tech rich, but everything else poor. And that's of no use. He has no map control. He has a Shin Turcher that's managed to defend the main base. Shin Turcher's Zion Pulsar managed to stop the attack in the main base. Not really defend. I mean, losing half of your RPs doesn't count as defending. But he did save it before it was completely overrun. While Nail, of course, has to deal with the fact that... He is losing one of his bases. Not his prize base. This is definitely the prize base. But still losing a base is not great. But he has tons of money in the bank, so he doesn't have to worry so much about it. He just said he was coming in, and Nail is getting chrono porting as well, which will likely put a better use than the lack of anything that... Really, Honu has not done anything with gate tech. He has the ability to command, he has the ability... Sorry, ability to teleport. He has a slipgate, finally, but he doesn't have the ability to command his units from here. He has very little chrono energy, he has no hierarchy set up, except for the one between the Shin and Ted Turcher, and he has no... And this Zion Pulsar and Shin Turcher, but really... He's got nothing. Well, Nail has a great position, lots of units, tons of money, and I think Nail has finally realized where Honu actually is, or that Honu was away. I realized he finally caught him up, seeing that he 
This is how Honu knew what was going on in the first place. I'm not sure if he's well aware of the Southwest expansion, but there's really no reason he wouldn't be. I mean, Nail knows where everything else is. He has every single other base. He's got map control completely, other than the Southwest. So it stands to reason that Honu's there. But really, like I said, Honu is in... As much as, he, as much as he's eating resources, he has no idea how far ahead Nail is right now. And that Nail really is just a matter of pure energy for him getting production. Shin Haken quickly dying, becoming Shin Beer, and once again quickly dying to a bunch of Sebi Legos. So Shin Haken trying to skip away, trying to do it a can, but the Sebi Legos know exactly about the Southwest base. Two of them are going straight for it, they will find it, they will be able to deal a ton of damage to it. While Honu, of course, managing not really to do too much at all to stop this. Bastion will be able to help a bit, but really, Zebi Legos will just tear it to shreds. Actually, is the Bastion even close enough? No, really, it's the, it's the ACC that's doing all the work right now. So, Nail has a great position. He has more macro going on in the future, or closer to the present, rather. In the nearer past, I should say, not future. Not yet, future's over here. But the nearer past. And Honu has... Five Sepulchus in his main base, three Tethalkians trying to deal with it, one of the Sepulchus is about to die, Se one of the Tethalkians being jumped back for some reason, not sure why. That was that seems an odd command to have given, but regardless, Tethalkians are doing what they can, destroying one of the Sepulchus, the other Sepulchus is going to go down, three more Sepulchus, however, and one of the Tethalkians is almost dead, and needs to jump into the depot right now, but there's no room, so it can't actually get in there, but it's not dead yet. It is four health out of 420, not quite dead yet, now it's dead, Teth, Teth Beer pops out, and is able to deal more damage. More Teth Halkins coming out, and a Zion Halkin as well, which will be able to deal a bit of damage to the ground, but like I said, oh, and Calm Jamming, actually, but still, the Sepulu is where it wants to be, so Calm Jamming does not help. It has no abilities, it's where it needs to be. Shin and Teth Fear, sorry, Shin and Teth Torture coming around to the Northeast Expansion, dealing with damage they can. Nail is about 10 seconds behind, he's aware of that coming in, so he has lost to his bases, so this is what Honu was trying to do, actually, trying to get away from just one base and trying to use his power to harass everything else. And he does have a lot of Halcyon class units. He does have a lot of, well, Teth and Zion Hawkins. But there's also almost a dozen Sepi Ligus coming in to destroy everything that Honu has. And Nail can just keep building more and more and more. He has really very few limits on this. And Honu now, of course, has a lot of production capacity. He has, or not a lot of production capacity, sorry. He has a lot of resources, but not a lot of production capacity. Nail hasn't been using his production capacity, but he is chronoporting back some of this... Yeah, he's going to run back some of the Sepi Ligos to help save this base. And this base is definitely being saved. So the Sepi Ligos doing their job, getting rid of everything that was here already. Although, tagging the Shinbeer at first is not a good idea, but the Tethbeer will go down before the Sepi Ligo dies. Nail has secured the Northeast expansion, but now Honu is going straight for the throat, right for the main base. Might not be very effective, though, because a lot of Tethalkians, fairly powerful, but still, that's a lot of Tethalkians inside a bunch of domes. Trying to skip past the domes, but even then... Not able to deal a ton of damage. The domes will go down in a hurry, and then from there, not much can last. The Ted Hawkins will be able to take care of the Sepi Ligos, or at least damage the Sepi Ligos to some extent, but the Reef is going to be able to heal them up. It's there. It's very difficult to figure out the priority for the attacks. A Calm Jam, however, may make this worthwhile, but once again, Nail... No, this is doing a playable pass, so Nail can't produce much more. But as mentioned before, Nail has almost a dozen Sepi Ligos. He has a... Well, actually, no, half a dozen Sepi Ligos now. He must have lost a couple, but... Oh no, these are the other Sepi Ligos I was talking about that came in, but still, he has half a dozen Sepi Ligos. That's a ton of units. And now, Honus just sent half a dozen Teth Hawkins and a couple Zion Hawkins off to their deaths. And not really accomplishing much except a Calm Jam, which really... One Sepi Pod coming in will fix, and actually... I think, you know what? Not even. I think there's actually been some recovery going on already. So it's a bit hard to tell. Sorry, the Faropod, not Sepipod. Far Sepipod's TSS breaking. The Faropod can heal this all up. There's really no problem. It looks like it actually has. No, it has. What? Wait, no, this is... Well, anyway, the Sepipods are coming in to tr help deal with this. The Calm Jam did not last long. I mean, it lasted long, lasted long enough. Admittedly, it's stopped from the Octopods, but regardless, there's enough Sepipods coming in here. Chronoported back to come in and help out being re at least twice, or probably an echo chronoport actually, but still, Nail, like I said, has control of this game. I don't know how much more I can emphasize this. Nail has this game. He has total control over what's going on. That big attack in his main base now means there's, well, 
a bunch of Chrono Clones and was in his main base to help defend. So Honu has really accomplished nothing. I don't even think that that he's going to be able to even get the Calm Jam off that he had originally. Now, to be fair, if the Calm Jam got off right now when all these Sepi are together, that would be kind of handy. Well, Sepi and their Chrono Clones, I should say, were together. That would be handy. However, they it isn't. And now you have a bunch of Sepi and their Chrono Clones which aren't really doing much, except being there and dealing a ton of damage whenever they see anything and decide to kill it. More production capacity has been set up for Hono. He is definitely trying to get the production capacity he needs. However, that's not his bottleneck. His bottleneck is Chrono Energy. He needs to jump towards the, like, jump gradually towards the present, building and building and building as he goes along, and then he'll be able to get an army up and maybe have a chance to get out of this. But unfortunately, trying to build units as his Chrono Energy allows is not going to work. Especially since he sent all those Halkins units onto a suicide mission, which admittedly he couldn't really have known in advance, but still. That's a lot of Sepi Ligos. Now he knows. Now he is well aware that there are a ton of Sepi Ligos. The Teth Halkians are doing a very valiant job, but really, he just needs more. He needs numbers. That's the problem. He doesn't have any numbers. He has the units, he has a decent counter, but he doesn't have the numbers to make it work. And fortunately, he's also going into slow-mo when he's doing this production, which means he's losing out on Chrono Energy. He is jumping towards the present, though. He is jumping closer to the present and actually doing macro towards the present, using up his depot, filling up his depot with Halkian Plus units, a bunch of Zion Halkians, mind you. Not sure why, I'm not sure why he's not going for the Teth Hawkins. Perhaps he's going straight for a just direct base assault rather than going, or Calm Jam assault, even, rather than going for an anti air attack. But as I mentioned before, it's really strange. I mean, he's probably, he might be going for a Chronoport, but still, it's really strange the way he's doing it because, like I said, he doesn't have the numbers needed to do this. He, I mean, a bunch of Teth Turchers would really help, a bunch of. Well, a bunch of Teth anything, really, would help, but getting a bunch of Zion Hawkins and then using them when, I'm not sure, is kind of bizarre. Because, I mean, yeah, he's able to Calm Jam stuff and that does help, but these Farabods will recover everything, for one thing. And, there we go, Farabod recovery, that's all done. So, now, whatever Calm Jam has, effect has had, is gone. There's no real effect from it right now, and Honu can once again just send units back, sending units into the past, and continuing to attack. He still has his secondary base here in the middle right. Top right, secure, or was secured before, and he can always just move over there and grab it if he needs to. So, and Honor doesn't have a lot of units to defend with, to attack with, to do anything with. He has, like I said, a bunch of production towards the future, and he has a few units in the past, but really not the numbers he needs. And that's the problem. He doesn't have the numbers he needs to deal the damage he needs to actually do anything effective. He, does, he doesn't have the resources much either. Nail has tons of resources. Nail still has more resources than he can produce for, though he could easily just continue to produce Sepi Ligos and towards the future, and it looks like it's probably what he's going to do. And a Skip Torpedo coming in. Okay, so, Weaponry has been reserved for Honu. I kind of missed that. Skip Torpedo is coming in and will be able to deal damage to Nail, dealing quite a bit of damage, destroying a fair amount of this base, but really this base has been used up. All the LC has been taken, much of the QP is still being mined, but okay, it just started being mined. So granted, but even then, the RPs are mostly not dead, and the Shin Turcher just got blown up in the process. So the Shin Beer now attacking, doing what it can, but it's just a Shin Beer. As soon as Nail decides to actually pay attention to that area, it's going to be dead. Inceptors, however, coming in. Oh, Honu's going for Inceptors. This is one move I've not seen in a very long time. Going for Inceptors, likely to use them for firepower and repel. Inceptors have a, a repel ability, basically hit that and all nearby enemies for how much skip energy you have, teleport energy. All nearby enemies are teleported away. That's an interesting strategy, which might be the only thing that might work. Probably what he's going to plan to do is attack the main base, skipping everything away, and then destroying what he can that's left. However, Sepi is coming in. No nail apparently has cancelled Sepi Ligo attack. He has Sepi Ligos that were approaching, but they apparently are not going to ultimately be going for the southwest base. They are instead going to try to defend this base over here, middle the middle west base, which isn't really doing too much. And it looks like looks like Honu's actually managed to start to get the numbers he needs. Teleporting in he is teleporting towards I don't know, it looks like Where is he teleporting? He's teleporting RPs around. Looks like he's teleporting them within the base, but likely teleporting some outside of the base. Ah, here they are. There's one RP right here and couple more around the map. Sepithy was coming around the map, however, trying to just make sure they can get rid of everything. And Nail, like I said, has tons of resources. Even though it doesn't have a lot of units in the field right now, 
and he really should, but anyway, he has tons of resources. He could rebuild his army three times over, and he'd still have surplus. Hono, on the other hand, has hardly any chrono energy, has not a whole lot of resources, has all the units he's likely to get for the rest of the game, pretty much, unless he's able to build more... Well, really, the resources are being drained around the map pretty quickly, so he doesn't have a lot of resources to actually harvest before it's all done. This is the only base that is going to be available pretty soon. And it doesn't matter, though, Sebuligo is... Or, sorry, Sebuligo. Uh, Inceptor is coming to attack the Sebuligo horde, but the Sebuligos are attacking the main base, destroying the remaining RPs, which honestly didn't have... Well, actually, one of them had almost half a crate left of LC, so still, that's a lot of... That's about 220 LC, which Honu could use. So, RPs are going down, but the Inceptor is coming in and has damaged the main base, or not damaged the main base, is helping to attack the secondary base, the north, the Middle East base here, and Sebuligo is coming in, destroying the main, finally getting rid of that annex in the main, so Honu has lost his original main, though really for the entire game it hasn't been his main. The other Inceptor is coming in to help out, so both Inceptors are coming in, dealing quite a bit of damage this way. And the Sepik League was coming in towards the southeast or southwest base, which will ultimately destroy it. I don't see how he's going to defend. Nail is focused on the pass as well, so he's very likely chronoported back. The Sepik League goes, meaning, I mean, admittedly, the Inceptors might actually be up in time for those Sepik League goes to die, but that's still going to make this attack a lot weaker. The Sepik League has come in. And that's yeah. Was that another? No, Nail does not have. He does not have weapons, but he does have Sepik League coming in the main base. And Scepter coming in to try to help out, but it will die in no short... Oh man, that was that was way too fast to die. Another Scepter is coming in to help out. It is going to be able to be a bit more effective. The Scepter League have not attacked it yet, but it doesn't matter. They have attacked it. They have destroyed it. And now the Shin Turchers and Teth... Sorry, Shin Hawkins and Teth Hawkins are trying to help out. And now the Chronoport has happened. So, Honda destroyed what he could of the Scepter League, leaving five of them left to Chronoport back. No, six of them left to Chronoport back. But even then... He will have. He will be able to stop everything. The Inceptors have died. The Chronoport has occurred, and now this Red Time Wave is going to be carrying death for Honu. I don't see how Honu's going to be able to get out of this. Even if he does. Although he didn't manage to get rid of this base at this timeline, but. Or this. Not timeline, at this point in time, with the Green Time Wave, but the Red Time Wave will stop this entirely, meaning. There's no way he's going to kill that base. Nail still has a ton of resources. He, he still has tons and tons and tons of money. He can just build everything he wants and keep building and keep building. Well, Honu, Honu has some left. Yes, okay, fair amount, but that's only a few incept or a few. Well, a couple inceptors he wanted to. It looks like he is wanting to. He has a couple more foundations being built up, so I wouldn't be surprised if more inceptors come up. But that's two inceptors, or maybe a few Halkin class units, or a bunch of Churchers, but still not a whole lot of units compared to what Nail has. So at this point, it really comes down to production capacity, and Nail double checking when he is. And yes, he is able to stop the Inceptors coming in. Which means he will be able to just completely stop that assault in his main base. Thus stopping everything from coming in. Though it looks like... No, he's still dealing more damage. The blue time wave is carrying the complete death. So there's really not much that Nail has to worry about right now. All he needs to do is just build up a large enough force to go for a final attack. And here we go. Yeah, the Sebi Legos have... No, these are Sebi Legos that will be... Chronoport back. So yeah, there are the post corner pretty simply goes. Attacking the comm hub, which isn't going to help too much. The comm hub actually... Oh no, that comm hub's dead! So once this comm hub is gone, then yeah, the auto hierarchy and smart idol is gone, so there's no comm relay. Though Nail also has lost his own mound in the process. Oh, this attack actually ultimately did work out. So the Inceptor did manage to get in, ultimately. It was it had teleported away soon enough, but the main base still being heavily damaged, and of course a bunch of Sepik Ligos and their Chrono Clones coming back, destroy that Inceptor, and ultimately destroy the base, so Honu really doesn't have much of a base to go for. And Nail's question asking about GG, okay. For reference, asking if your opponent's gonna GG is a little bit rude, but doesn't matter, Honu has GG'd. So Honu has surrendered, that is the game, so wow, that was an interesting game. I'm a bit surprised Honu did that really roundabout strategy that he did. I mean, building... Okay, I can see building away from your main base for a Chrono Rush, but... Why did you have to take... It didn't even Chrono Port at all. And he got Gatex early on and didn't use it for another 15 minutes. I'm surprised that that actually happened. So, I'm not terribly surprised that Honu lost, but I think with some better timing and planning on that strategy, he could have actually really turned it around and turned it into a really effective Chrono Rush. Regardless, still a very interesting game.
very interesting attempt to take back map control after sacrificing it for tech. Unfortunately, it did not work out in his favor, and like I said, Nail really never had much pressure on him. He had tons of money in the bank, he just needed to use it, and he didn't even have to. He had the Sepulego Hordes just going around the map, killing everything. So, well done to Nail, and that is the game. So, hope you enjoyed that, and have a good night, everyone.